Today we are going to talk about fluorescence microscopy. Fluorescence is the property of molecules to absorb and emit light at a certain wavelength of light. This figure illustrates that a fluorophore can absorb one wavelength of light and then emit at another wavelength of light. Now the difference between the, the wavelengths is known as the Stokes shift. Um, one thing to take note of is that during the excitation emission process, a certain amount of energy is lost. And as a result, the emission wavelength is going to be at a much longer wavelength compared to the excitation wavelength. Fluorescent microscopy enables you to see cellular components like DNA, organelles, and proteins. It can also be used to see bacteria on the surface of cells as seen here. And now I'm going to talk to you about how fluorescent microscopy works. These two figures here illustrate um, a very critical concept in fluorescence microscopy, and that is matching your filter block to your fluorophore. Now, as you can see in this diagram, if your fluorophore can absorb and emit ray, um, light at these two wavelengths, you have to have a filter block, a filter block that will match those wavelengths, um, as you can see here and here. Notice that the in-between regions here um, that don't overlap. You cannot, that allows, if the filter block allows light from this area to enter, then it will not be exciting the specimen at the wavelength that you want. Which is why it's very important to understand the importance of matching your filter block to your fluorophore of your specimen. Now, now I'm going to go talk about the light path of the fluorescence microscope. Over here we have what's called the filter block. And this little line right here is depicting what's called a diachroic mirror. And over here we have the excitation filter, and this is going to be the emission filter, which we will talk about shortly. Now let's say, for example, that your specimen um, has a dye or a stain of the dye that requires green light to be excited at that wavelength. So what happens, you're going to pick the appropriate excitation filter, in this case a green filter, um, that allows only green light to enter the filter, whereas different wavelengths of, of light, such as red light, is going to go in and it's going to bounce right back. It's not, going to allow, it's, not, it's not going to allow it to go through the filter. Green light is going to go and it's going to bounce off the dichroic mirror. So it's going to go up and then it's going to go straight to the objective. Notice here that the light does not go through a condenser like um, other forms of microscopy like DIC or phase contrast. Um, it's going to go straight to the objective and this allows the light to hit the specimen at the same side of the specimen, which helps reduce um, any kind of stray light. Um, this is called epi-illumination, which is another important concept to understand in fluorescent microscopy. So following this light path, it's going to go through the objective, um, and then it's going to strike the specimen. And over there, it's going to be absorbed by the specimen, and as a result, it's going to emit light. So as light gets emitted, um, Notice, different wavelength, it's going to be emit red light now. It's going to go back to the objective. And the difference here is going to go straight through the acroic mirror, where it's going to hit the emission filter. And then from here, you get image formation of the specimen. So now we are going to talk about some important terms to know about fluorescence microscopy. First one being is called quantum yield. Uh, quantum yield is defined as the ratio of photons that are emitted per photon that is absorbed, which is important in obtaining a bright fluorescent signal. Um, pretty much having a higher um, quantum yield means that the 404 is more efficient at what it's doing, at, at absorbing and emitting light. Another important term to know is called photobleaching, um, which is inevitable. Photobleaching is the permanent loss of fluorescence of a specimen or in this case, or any kind of fluorophore. Um, photobleaching is bound to occur um, sooner or later, uh, depending on how well you take care of your specimen. But it is important to take care of your specimen and to reduce your exposure um, in order to reduce photobleaching. Thanks for watching! <laughs> Ow.